Chapter 192 A Prophetic Game of the Future Begins The little child now turned to Sixtus as the oldest boy among the children adopted by Cyrenius and said to him, Sixtus, go and make ten little pits there at the edge of the path, each a handspan away from the other. You already know what to do. Then bring the ten little marbles that James made from clay for us to play with, and we shall toss a few marbles. You already know how, since you are the one who showed me. At this, Sixtus promptly did what the little child wanted. When the ten little pits were made, and the clay marbles were brought, the little child said to Cyrenius, now set me down again so I can explain to you and show how this game goes. But you other children must not interrupt me, since I want to explain the matter to Cyrenius myself. Hereupon the little child with pathos turned to Cyrenius and declared, See, the game goes as follows. You must stand three paces away from this little pit, then toss a marble. If you make a successful toss into the tenth, and therewith the last and farthest pit, you are the king of the game. If you reach the ninth, you then are a prime minister. In the eighth, you are a general. In the seventh you are a governor, in the sixth a judge, in the fifth a priest, in the fourth a farmer, in the third a father, in the second a mother, and in the first a child. How the game then goes on, I shall tell you as soon as the pits are occupied. Hereupon, Cyrenius smilingly took a marble and tossed it along the path, and the marble quickly rolled in to the first pit. And the little child asked, Are you satisfied with your station? Otherwise, you can, as a beginner, toss twice more. And Cyrenius said, O oh, all joy of my life, my Jesus, I am satisfied just where I am. And the little child replied, Good. So do all of you now toss, one after the other. I shall make the last toss. And the children tossed their marbles, but did not occupy all the little pits, but generally came together in twos and threes in one pit. Finally, the little child tossed and came, as always, into the tenth pit. At this, a girl complained and declared, So the little Jesus just has to be a king all the time. But the little child retorted, Why are you so vexed at that? You, after all, tossed ahead of me, so why are you so awkward with your hand? Now do not be cross with me over that, or I shall quickly send you another mouse of which you are so much afraid. To this the girl said no more and was reconciled to being alone in her second pit. And since the ninth, eighth, seventh and sixth pits were unoccupied, Cyrenius said to the little child, See, O oh my life, we still have no Prime Minister, no General, no Governor and no Judge. Who now will take over these important posts? These posts, replied the little child, I will now have to look after myself, since no one occupied them. For all the unoccupied posts must be taken over by one starting with the one who occupies the king's pit. 
If the pit of the Prime Minister were occupied, the three following posts would go to him. But since this post is vacant, the four pits fall only to the king. And since all the pits are now occupied, let us begin the actual game. Chapter 193 The Symbolic Children's Game And the little child continued, Now that I am the king, everyone must also obey me as everyone obeys a king. And so then hear my laws. Let the pit of the priests be wise and mostly kind rather than strict. Whoever laughs is relieved of his office and falls into disgrace. Little pit of the farmer, be active, for when you are indifferent, you will have to hunger. Little pit of the father, be full of love toward your children and raise them correctly and justly, or you will be ridiculed by them. Little pit of the mother, be frugal and filled with fear of God so your infants will become wise. And my dear little children's pit, remain as you are, a constant teacher of the wise toward wisdom in God. Now these are the laws, and they must be followed precisely. But if anyone wants a favour from me, he must come to me for it kneeling. Go now and be active, and leave me alone. And you, Cyrenius, must go with the father and the mother, because you are a child. A girl and a boy who took the part of priests now went to a somewhat elevated spot in a dignified and serious manner. Then two girls and a boy went their way as farmers, and busied themselves quite actively on the ground, as if their work were the most important. Next, another boy and a girl, conducting themselves quite gravely, went their way and represented the father who, to be a proper father, should also be a mother in his heart. Then the one mother went to her place followed by her child, Cyrenius. But the mother was too shy of her child, and did not dare to speak to him and teach him wisely. She therefore turned back to the king, and asked him for the grace of giving her another office. The king then referred her to the priests, who began to laugh when they saw the mother coming their way. At this, the king immediately called the priests over and deposed them, because they had laughed when they should have been wise and dignified, and made farmers of them. But the farmers soon began to argue and quarrel among themselves, and the king called them, and smoothed over their differences, and established peace among them. Now the mother came again, and wanted another office. Here the king said, Since you represent love in its wisdom, then be the priest. Then the father came and complained that he had no wife because the mother was a priest. And the king replied, Then take the child and go over and take the place of the mother. And so it was done. But the priest now began to demand of the farmers that they should become more subservient to him. At this, matters soon fell into great disorder, and the king recalled them all, and said, I see that you are all at odds, so let us make a new toss. Chapter 194 the first woman's nature is rebuked. Cyrenius again tossed his marble first, 
and this time landed in the ninth little pit. And the children of Cyrenius declared, Father Cyrenius, that is really moving up, from child to prime minister, and that at the first toss. If you were to toss again, you surely could get into the king's pit. But Cyrenius said, My children, I am already satisfied with this honour, so you just go ahead and toss the marbles. See to it that you get into the children's pit quite often, for there you will find the best and most desirable place. Thereupon Sixtus quickly tossed, landed in the children's pit, and was quite happy. Then the oldest girl tossed and again landed in the second mother's pit. At this the girl complained as she had done before, saying, Oh, so I have to be the mother again after all? Here the little child went over, took the marble out of the pit, handed it back to the girl and said, Here, toss again, you dissatisfied one. But see to it that you do not toss into the mother's pit again. The girl now tossed once more, landed in the same pit, and nearly wept from vexation. At this the little child again stepped over to her and asserted, O oh, you tyrannical creature! Truly, in you the first woman's nature is revealed. What shall I do with you, O oh serpent's nature, O oh lion's paw? I shall promptly call a mouse that will really torment you, then you will no doubt become more to my liking. At this the girl quickly fell on her knees before the little child and implored amid tears, My dearest Jesus, I beg you, just no mouse or rat, for that makes me terribly afraid. Truly, I will a thousand times rather take the part of the mother than to see a single mouse. Here the little child said, this time I shall spare you with a mouse. But if you grumble once more, then ten mice will come at you at once and sniff at your feet. At this the girl was quiet as a mouse and watched quite patiently while the other children occupied all the other pits and did not even take exception when another girl occupied the father's pit which otherwise always vexed her the most if a boy did not occupy it. Lastly, the girl tossed and still once more landed in the mother's pit. At this she bit her lips in secret vexation. And the little child smiled, took a little twig, dabbed all the marbles with it, and then breathed over the little pits. And instantly, a lively mouse sat therein in place of the marble. When the girl beheld these little animals, she began to scream and to talk incoherently in great excitement and ran away. Here Joseph came outside and asked, My dear Jesus, what is the matter between you and the girl again, that she screams so loudly? The little child replied, She is jealous, as always, so I have visited her again with a few mice. At this Joseph smiled and went after the girl to calm her, while the rest of the children peacefully continued with their game, for they saw nothing of the terrible mice. Chapter 195 A Simile of the World's Children After a while, the girl returned, and the little child promptly asked her if she wanted to join in the game again. But the girl replied, I do want to look on, but I do not want to play, for I am easily annoyed, and then you are promptly severe. So I do not want to take part, for I am too greatly afraid of you because you quickly call forth rats and mice. 
Here the little child said, Well, why then are you so foolish and become annoyed about matters by which you have nothing to lose, whether they turn out one way or the other? Be satisfied with what your lot brings you, and no rats or mice will bother you any more. Look at me. I always toss last, and I do not grumble when, in fact, the precedence rightfully belongs to me. Why then do you grumble when you, as a girl, should really personify patience itself? The girl replied, How can I help that? Why then do I have such a disposition? I've not given it to myself. So I am as I am, and cannot be otherwise. And since I know that I am like that, I would rather not join in the game. For if anything annoys me, you will punish me again with mice. At this, the little child turned away and remarked as if to himself, See, the children of the world remonstrate with you and criticize your work among themselves because they do not know you. But one more throw, and still another throw, and the children of the world will think differently of you. Thereupon the little child turned around and asked the girl, Whom then do you blame, that you are thus angry, and are now dissatisfied with your lot? Here the girl retorted, Truly, when you, my dear Jesus, once start asking, then there is no end to it, and you then become a terribly annoying child because of that. What do I know about who is responsible that I am like this? You yourself are a sort of little prophet and are a wonder child that can speak with God. Ask him, if you can, and he will best be able to tell you why I am like this. At this, the little child stepped closer to the girl and asserted, Girl, if you knew me, you would speak otherwise. But since you do not know me, you allow your tongue to run away with you. Just look up there to the sun. What do you suppose it is, and from whom does it get its luster? But the girl, who had already become quite impatient, complained. Why do you have to pick especially on me and downright torment me with your questions? Just look, there are seven others, but you do not ask them anything. Go over to them for a while and bother them with your eternal questioning. And the little child retorted, Oh girl, see, they are well and need no medicine, but you are sick in your soul. Wherefore, I would indeed help you if you were not so contrary. But since you are so very contrary, it will be difficult to help you. But just remember this. If an angel from the heavens of God were given the grace to be questioned by me like you are, he would become so inflamed in his great bliss that the fire of his love would destroy the whole earth in an instant. Now leave me, for I do not care for you any more, because you are so contrary and stubborn. Here the girl left and secretly wept, while Jesus as king continued to direct his playmates. Chapter 196 A New King All Over the World In the course of this second game, still other dissensions arose among the players. The Prime Minister was too greatly feared because Cyrenius held that office, so the General as well as the Governor and the Judge hardly dared to undertake anything against the Prime Minister and privately sulked at such an arrangement. Especially the two girls who held the offices of Prefect and Judge were not satisfied because they were not permitted to do anything without the permission of the Prime Minister. 
Only Sixtus in his children's pit was wholly satisfied. The little child saw this discord, hence he called them all together again, handed out the marbles once more, and had them toss for the third time. At this toss, Cyrenius landed in the king's pit, and the little child in the children's pit. And all the children were highly pleased that, for once, the two years and four months old Jesus also landed in the children's pit. Here even that certain girl returned and said to the little child, See, that is the proper place for you. It makes me happy that for once you also landed in this boring little pit. The little child replied, See, the Prime Minister's pit is still free. Take a marble and toss. Perhaps you will land in it. Thereupon the girl took the marble again, tossed, and actually landed in the Prime Minister's pit. And when she saw herself in the pit of the Prime Minister, she turned quite red for joy that her ambition had finally been satisfied, and jokingly remarked, Well, my Jesus, look out. Now I shall surely punish you if you are disobedient. Here the little child said, You know, the children are free from the law. How will you treat me and what will you do to me? And the girl replied, Just let the game begin, and you shall promptly see whether the Prime Minister has no power over the children. Then Cyrenius, as king, allotted the game, and all went to their places, and there administered their office. But the Prime Minister especially incited the priest against the child, that he should not in any case give him a hearing. Thus all the other officers also had no ear for the child. And the child therefore ran to the king, and complained to him, according to the rule of the game, over his persecution. But the king answered, O oh Lord, I am still not familiar enough with these rules. But since, notwithstanding these rules, a disorder has again crept into the game, I will recall the little company once more. And if you wish, we can make a new toss right away. And the little child declared, Yes, Cyrenius, a new one, and forever the last one. So then call the children together, that we may make the final throw. Cyrenius now called the children together, distributed the marbles, and all tossed. This time all the children, as well as Cyrenius, tossed into the children's pit. Only Jesus tossed into the king's pit. At this, his pit at once began to glow, and his marble began to shine like the sun, and the little child took the shining marble, laid it into the father's pit, and then asked Cyrenius, Cyrenius, now do you understand something of this significant game? Cyrenius answered, O oh Lord, my life, how should I be able to understand that? And the little child replied, Then listen to me. I shall interpret it for all of you plainly and thoroughly. Chapter 197 The Little Child Interprets the Game And the little child immediately began to speak like a wise teacher in a synagogue and said, Now this is the meaning of this game. From the beginning of creation, as well as before it, God was the Lord from eternity. The first toss signifies 
The ancients recognized the freedom of their spirit, but do not want to give the glory to God. And the game gets out of order. This game lasts from Adam to Noah and from Noah to Moses. The contrary girl represents love to God as well as to the world, which rejects love. In Noah's day, mankind is judged by what amounts to a threat, as this girl was chastised with mice. But mankind does not improve and gradually falls into idolatry and wants altars, a visible deity and much ceremony. Here the Lord calls for an end to the game during the leadership of Moses and a second throw takes place. In the beginning, it seems as if this time it would endure, but just as soon as Moses turns his back, the golden calf is fashioned. Thus the girl begins to quarrel all the more, for which she is earnestly rebuked with the threat of actual judgment. Hence the flood was actually more of a very strong threat than an actual judgment. But the judgment of the people in the desert was an actual judgment, since it was done by fire as once at Sodom. With that throw, the new game begins. At first matters go well, but only out of fear, for this game is lacking in love, represented by the mother who withdrew because she was not permitted to rule. This mosaic game lasted until this time and destroyed itself by all manner of revolts and through constant fear. Again the Lord calls the little flock together. The toss is made and the Lord becomes a child. Here love comes and expresses a certain joy at the impotent state of the Lord. Love now tosses also, and succeeds in attaining to the first step of the throne. And there she persecutes the Lord unto death, and leaves him no rest for over one thousand and about nine hundred years, and incites everything against him. By that time, the established powers themselves realize that this state of affairs cannot endure, and a final throw is made. The Lord again becomes the only Lord, as of old. His rule is filled with burning zeal, and his throw is marked by the fullness of his grace. And all the people will recognize the Father from the children's place when he, as such, approaches closer and closer to the people with all the power of his love. And that will be the final throw, and no other will take place evermore. For then the Father will be the Father eternally. See, that is the interpretation of this game. Now let us go back into the house to see what the reawakened Talia is doing. So follow me, all of you. <laughs>